In this short video, we're going to derive a formula connected to the derivative of a Laplace transform. So let's just look at a couple of examples. If I have a function f of t, lowercase f of t, and I find its Laplace transform, which would be uppercase f of s, what would happen if I took the derivative of that uppercase f of s? Well, if we look at the definition of the Laplace transform, I can then try to bring the derivative inside the integrand. So now I'm only taking the derivative with respect to x. I'm sorry, with respect to s. So t and f of t they're all treated as constants when I'm taking this derivative. So f of t, I just treat as a multiplier, a constant multiplier. And so then uh, by using the chain rule, I'll get a factor of t, actually negative t, after I take the derivative. Now, if I factor this negative one or this negative sign outside of the integral, what's left is e to the negative st times t times f of t. Well, that would be a, the definition of the Laplace transform of t times f of t. Now, I do have a negative sign out in front there. So what that tells me is that if I want to take the Laplace transform of t times a function f of t, all I need to do is find the Laplace transform of f of t. So the idea is we know the Laplace transform of f of t, or it's easy to find out. And then I would just take the derivative of that with respect to s, and then I need to change the sign. So we usually use the uppercase f of s to represent the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t. So my formula would be the Laplace transform of t times f of t would be the first derivative with respect to s of f of s times negative 1. All right, well, let's take a higher power. What if I want to find the Laplace transform of t squared times f of t? Now we see this a lot with Laplace transforms where there's going to be a recursive relationship. In other words, I can break up t squared times f of t as t times a new function g of t, which is defined as just being t times f of t. So what do I have? I have t times g of t. Well, g is just a, a different letter. So finding the Laplace transform of t times g of t would be the same as finding the Laplace transform of t times f of t. I would need to find the Laplace transform of g and then take the first derivative with respect to s and then change the sign. Well, do we know the Laplace transform of g? Well, it really depends on our original function lowercase f g of s is the Laplace transform of t times f of t. But wait a minute. I know that the Laplace transform of t times f of t is just the opposite of the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform with respect to over the Laplace transform of f of t, which is just f of s. So in the end, I'm going to have no sign change, but now with the second derivative, f of s. And so we can start to see a pattern here that if I know the Laplace transform of f of t and I multiply f of t times t to some positive integer power, if the integer is even, there's going to be no sign change. And I'm just going to take that derivative or that many derivatives of the Laplace transform of f of t. If it's an odd number, I'll have to remember to change the sign. And we can summarize that in the following formula. Again, 
If I start with f of t, multiply it by t to a power of n, I can evaluate that Laplace transform by taking the nth derivative of the Laplace transform of just f, and then if that's an odd number, it'll have to be a negative in front, but if it's an even numbered n, then there will be no sign change. All right, so we can write that out as a theorem. It's just a formula which we can remember and it will help us evaluate different Laplace transforms. So for example, what if I wanted to evaluate the Laplace transform of t times sine of kt? You can use the definition. Uh, you'll just need to use uh, some integration by parts to maybe several times to evaluate the the integral, but this formula is going to help us tremendously. So I'm just going to first find the Laplace transform of sine of kt. That was in our formula page. It's just k over s squared plus k squared. I know I want to take its derivative, so I'm going to rewrite that as k parentheses s squared plus k squared raised to the negative one power. So the next step will be to take the derivative. I'll use the power rule and the chain rule. So I'll bring the negative one out in front. I'm going to put the k over here with the 2s, which comes from the power rule. And I can write that uh, cleanly as negative 2ks over quantity s squared plus k squared all squared. So the plus transform then of t times sine of kt is 2ks over quantity s squared plus k squared all squared. All right, so let's put this to work then in solving an initial value problem. We have x, which is a function of t. So the second derivative of x plus 16x equals cosine of 4t. We have the initial conditions that x at 0 equals 0 and x prime of 0 equals 1. So we'll let uppercase x, which will be a function of s. I'm, I'm just writing the uppercase x. That's going to represent the Laplace transform of lowercase x of t. And so we had a formula for the second derivative. That would be s squared times the plus transform minus s times the e value of x at 0, and then subtract of x prime of 0. The plus transform of 16x is just 16 times uppercase x. And the plus transform of cosine of 4t is s over s squared plus 16. So let's put in our initial conditions and rearrange some terms. And then we're going to have to solve for uh, uppercase x. So now I have two terms here. The first term is easy to evaluate. We should recognize this as being a multiple of the plus transform of sine of 4t. And then the second one we should think about the example we just did. This looks like a multiple of t sine of 4t. So let's think about that a little bit more carefully. In order for this to be the first term to be the plus transform of a sine function, uh, we have 16 in the denominator, so I need the our k value here would be 4, so I need to have 4 in the top. And if I multiply by 4 in the top, I'll have to divide by 4 outside. For the second term, let's just remember the formula that we just derived, that the plus transform of t sine of kt needs 2ks in the numerator. So in, in this case, again, k equals 4. So I already have the s, 2 times 4 would give me 8, so I need 8 
And so I'll multiply the top by eight, but then I'll have to multiply outside by one eighth. And so then I'll have a one fourth. This will be sine of four t plus one eighth t sine of four t. And I forgot a t. Let's put that t in here. Ratio first. 